So next up we have the electric type. Electric type has always been a personal favorite of mine, so I was really looking forward to using this. And I think in that decks it's gonna get some really, really strong tools, especially because the reintroduction of hidden power ice uh, can really help with things like ground types, dragon types, grass types, a lot of things that kind of give the electric type trouble to break through. So with that, let's jump right into the team and see what we're using today. So first up we have Tapu Koko, and Tapu Koko is actually going to be a support Tapu Koko. It's going to run dual screens, light screen and reflect. With max HP and max speed it can get these screens down pretty fast, and is actually relatively bulky with a 343 HP. Its defenses are decent, especially behind screens, and with light clay we can extend that, which really helps uh, a lot of survivability on the team. Electric Surge as well of course is super important for the team as it does generally boost my electric attacks. I'm not actually running Rising Voltage um, which I would generally recommend on Electric Team but I wanted to try without it and see how I do. Uh, then we have U-Turn which is good for grabbing momentum especially after I get my screens down. I can then get in Coco later in the game, potentially get screens back up, I can potentially... Um, use that as a sack later on. And finally we have Taunt, which is very good for uh, stopping opponent's setup, especially like rocks or sticky webs, which my team does not like. Next up we have my Magnus Pool Magnazone. It's a similar to the one I used in Generation 8. I thought it was hilarious and really, really strong. So I definitely think it's a worthy fit on the team. With Magnet Pool, it pretty much stops uh, any Steel types escaping unless they're a ghost type like Aegislash or for some reason are running Shed Skin, which I don't think they generally do in... Um, in that deck's monos. Um, with that, we have leftovers, max defense, max HP. Of course, paired with Tapu Koko, this thing is really, really bulky, especially behind screens. It can actually eat up a lot of earthquakes. This is further compounded by the fact we have iron defense, which makes my defense crazy strong. And if we are trapping something like Ferrothorn, uh, we can even sub up in its face, and there's very little they can do to us. They can't leech seed, it normally can't be toxic, it's toxic, so Magnazone is generally a good swap into poison types. Uh, body Press starts to really put the hurt on opponents after a few iron defenses, especially if its substitute can't be broken in one or two hits. And finally, we do have Discharge, which is boosted by Tapu Koko's Electric Terrain, and generally just has a 30% chance of Paralysis, which is quite nice, and it's quite good, especially if the opponent Pokemon is Ghost-type and is immune to Body Press. Next up, we have Zapdos, and it's actually going to be as well a physically defensive Zapdos, and it's mainly going to be my answer to Ground Pokemon. So with physically defensive, its thing is pretty bulky, it has a respectable 383 HP, and a pretty good 295 um defense. It has heavy duty boots which is very good for being able to constantly swap in on stealth rocks which would be otherwise a thing of worry for Zapdos. And of course Static can be really good for punishing physical attackers, especially multi-hitters like things like Cincino, um, Urshifu Rapid Strike, anything that hits multiple times really does not appreciate how many times it has to roll for Static. On top of rolling for Static it also has to um, survive Discharge and Discharge has a 30% chance so I think Static Multi-hit static with like surging strikes and discharge. I think it's it's something like 78% chance of paralyzing. Don't quote me on that. That is completely off the top of my head. It might be closer to 80, but it is quite a high chance of paralyzing the opponent, which of course they do not like. Uh, next up we have Toxic, and Toxic is really good for spreading um, status effects, especially on bulkier teams like Normal, which can give my team trouble to break through because I am running kind of a defensive electric, so Toxic is generally quite nice. We have Roost for Longevity, which is good paired with my nice HP and decent defenses, especially behind screens. This thing is super bulky and can eat up Earthquakes thanks to its flying typing. And finally we have Hurricane, and Hurricane is nice for uh, dealing with flying types, I'm sorry, the uh, grass types in the tier, which gave my, my team a lot of trouble, as well as just hitting ground types super uh, neutrally with a stab boosted hurricane is quite good. So I actually do run uh, little speed on Zapdos. I think it's important to have some speed to outspeed threats, but it's important not to have so much speed that you outspeed things like uh, Excadrill, for example, because if you roost in front of a ground type and they outspeed, or they're slower than you, they can click Earthquake, so it is important to um, kind of balance your speed stat. Next up, we have pretty much the main attacker on the party, we have Zero Aura, and Zero Aura is going to be, uh, again, relatively bulky behind screens, it's uh, not great on the defensive sides and the HP is okay, but behind screens this thing is quite bulky, especially after a bulk up and leftovers for longevity. We also have Vault Absorb, which is nice for the electric ditto in case we do ever fight it. Uh, it's not the most useful ability, personally I would prefer something else on an electric team, but you know, you have to do what you have to do with. 
So moveset wise, we have knockoff, which is I do think is quite nerfed in the uh, not decks. I was considering running play rough because normally I would have something like Dazzling Gleam to deal with the Dragon types, but Hidden Power Ice is back too, which is quite nice, so Knockoff is generally good team support. Plasma Fist is a really, really strong ability. Uh, strong attack was 100 base, boosted further by Stab, and potentially Electric Terrain thanks to Coco. So this thing can hurt really hard, especially after some boosts from Bulk Up. And finally, we have Drain Punch. I prefer Drain Punch over Close Combat, personally, uh, for the longevity it offers you. Especially against Dark Types, uh, Rock Types, Steel Types, Drain Punch can keep Zara Aura quite alive quite a long time, especially compounded with the boosts from Bulk Up. Now this is where Volt Absorb actually comes in very handy. With Plasma Fists, you can actually block attacks like Yawn, Return, uh, Rapid Spin, all those kind of stuff, because Plasma Fist does turn the opposing Pokemon's normal attacks into Electric, and then you can Volt Absorb them. So if you ever come across maybe a Rapid Spinner, always be sure to click Plasma Fist in front of their face because you will eat the Rapid Spin. It's very, very fun. Rotom Wash is my next uh, Pokemon on the team, and it's going to be a specially defensive, bulky Rotom Wash. Now, unfortunately, Rotom's HP is pretty pathetic at 303. That's max invested. And, uh, though, however, it does have pretty good defenses with 107 in both bases. So we have 107 uh, max special defense, which is quite good. Again, you're probably sick of me saying this, but paired behind uh, the screen top of Coco Gives, this thing is quite bulky. We have Will of Wisp, which is very good team support. It can easily burn uh, offensive threats and allow Magnezone and Zapdos to tank even more, even allowing Rotom Wash to tank more. Uh, we have Vault Switch, which is good for grabbing momentum, especially paired with the U-turn on top of Coco. We can kind of come in, threaten something with a burn, Vault Switch out, and try to grab momentum. We have Hydro Pump, which is good for ground types in the tier because they do give me trouble. Um, unfortunately, it will not work on water absorbers, such as Seismitoad or Gastrodon, but we can work around those in other ways. And finally, we have Defog for team support to get rid of opposing screens or hazards, especially if they stack like spikes. That can give my team quite a lot of trouble. And finally, we have Leftovers for Longevity, and its ability to levitate is very good to eat more ground attacks paired with Zapdos. And last but not least, we have Mega Manectric. I ended up with Static to begin with. It can kind of just punish U-turns and stuff, though generally speaking, I will not be swapping Manectric in because it is um, extremely frail. Upon Mega Evolution, it does get Intimidate, which further boosts my team's physical defenses. This is very nice for Magnezone, for Zapdos, for honestly anything across the board. It is quite a physically defensive Electric team. Uh, we have Flamethrower, which is very good for Steel types, like Ferrothorn. Uh, grass types as well can kind of warm me out, which kind of uh, can be a hassle. We have Hidden Power Eyes for things like Lando, for uh, Gliscor, uh, Garchomp, any kind of ground Pokemon, or even Dragon Pokemon too, do not appreciate Hidden Power Ice, which I think is a big boost to the electric type. Next up we have Thunderbolt, and Thunderbolt is generally just quite stri strong stab. However, it does um, offer some nice... Um, just nice general coverage, uh, especially paired with the electric terrain from Tapu Koko. And finally, again, we have Vault Switch for uh, momentum, which is good to come in, intimidate something, and Mega Manetric is fast, so we can get a Vault Switch into a uh, ally Pokemon, namely something like Zero Aura, who can potentially set up bulk ups. So that is going to be the team today, but before we jump in, I want to ask you what your favorite electric type Pokemon is. For me, I think it personally has to be Mareep. I think Mareep is so adorable. I just love... Um, Using it in every Jota run I ever do, pretty much. I will try to fit a Mareep or Ampharos on my team. I just really like that line, just very, very cute to me. So with that, let's pause and be right back. So here we have a game against Mono Fire, which is um, can be a good matchup for Electric. Unfortunately, I do lack a lot of particularly fast Pokemon, so this one could be uh, kind of tough. I think I'm going to open up my Tapu Koko. Hey. And I'm going to try Taunt the Torque will turn 1, just to stop it getting rocks up. It um, gives me a nice bit of uh, comfort. Uh, now we're going to light screen up. They couldn't taunt me anyway thanks to electric terrain. I'll get both my layers up. I don't have any Pokemon that can particularly sweep. Maybe um, my Zera Aura is probably the best bet. So let's go into that and try bulk up and see what work we can do. I could have sworn that um, this was banned down here, Cinderace was banned here in the national decks, but I guess I'm wrong. So we're going to try and bulk up here. We should live, I think, a V-Create in the sun because we have plus one and we also have my Reflect, which is quite nice. They're smart to swap out there. 
into their Torkoal. Very smart, probably trying to waste my turns of Reflect um, so that their V Create will indeed KO. But my plus one zero aura is quite good in this position. There's nothing that particularly likes to swap into this. Especially with screens up. And I have two more turns of Light Screen. Victini comes back in. That's just Plasma Fist again. They could go into Intimidate, Incineroar, so I'm actually going to bulk up once. Nice, we live. That's just so crazy how bulky this thing is. And now we do outspeed. This is Choice Scarf, but because their speed drop from V Create, we do outspeed now. It's in with in my best interest to try and get one more bulk up at some stage. Because otherwise V Create kills, but I suppose this position. I just click Plasma Fists, I KO Incineroar. Now unfortunately, Victini can come out and click V Create, and there's not too much I can do about that. I think in this position, I sack my Magnazone. Yeah, I sack my Magnazone. I don't see it doing anything in this game. Because if they do recreate, they U-turn very good play on my opponent's part. Thinking I'd swap out the uh, Zero Aura. Great play. And Cinderace is an issue. Let's try Iron Defense. I'm dead if I don't anyway. Wow, I lived that. That's crazy. And maybe that was a high roll, and with a low roll, I actually will survive one. No, I didn't. That's fine. Hmm. I think we're going to get back in my Coco and get my Reflect back up. Reflect and Light Screen here actually make Rotom Wash quite good, I think. Ooh, I got the burn, unfortunately. That's okay. Please don't be Court Change. I'm going to taunt just to make sure they can't Court Change me. And dying in this position isn't the worst for me. Now the question is, is it worth going into Zero Aura and trying to bulk up in their face? I think I'm going to try it. I think bulk up into Drain Punch does get me back a decent amount of HP. Assuming, of course, I don't get burned from Pyro Ball. Please don't burn. Nice. Uh, I'm going to have to go for Plasma Fist, just KO this. It's a hassle to me. And they give me some good damage on Heatran, which is pretty good. Now, unfortunately, I forgot my Light Clay was knocked off. That's my bad. Either way, I feel like Rotom Wash is pretty decent in this position. They can easily go into Victini and nab a KO here. What I'm going to try and do is roll for a Static Paralysis on Zapdos, as that would be really good for me. I did not think I'd live to. Ah, we got it. That's so good for me. So we're going to roost up in their face. As we know now, V-Create can't uh, kill me. And we're going to go for a Discharge in case they decide to swap out. And uh, Charizard, obviously, we'd love to give a Discharge to. This might even KO. Ooh, just missed out on the KO, unfortunately. Is this Mega? Or which Mega is this? I can't take chances of it being Mega X in Dragon Dancing, so we're just going to Discharge again. That's okay. Because this position, we get my Manetrica and Vault Switch. So my Intimidate is really good against both Cinderace and Victini, especially because Victini is paralyzed. And in this position, I outspeed both of them. And Plasma Fist just kind of puts a good dent in them. I want to bulk up on the Circle Punch, so I'm just going to Plasma Fist straight up. That did a decent chunk. And here we can get him Electric again. And I think what we're going to do is Vault Switch into Rotom. Sucker shouldn't do too much. And because they're Choice Scarf, I think they outspeed my Rotom, which means I can get a slow Vault Switch off into my Manectric, which is really good because once this is Intimidated... Oh, this is even better. So now we Intimidate with Manectric, and this game should be as good as over. If I land a Hydro Pump, especially if they V-Create now, they're minus one. They Zen Headbutt. GG. Very well played my opponent's part. They played their Victini very well. Unfortunately for them, I did get to static them, uh, which really, really helped me out in the end game. But with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game here against Mono Dark. I do think my Zero Aura is pretty good in this game. I think Magnazone can do some work too, especially if I get some body presses up. Uh, we're going to open up a Coco, as usual, as they open up Muck. Now that is kind of scary. We're going to reflect turn one, as they probably poison job here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a huge opportunity to set up my iron defenses on the likes of Magnazone. Actually, is this Zoroark? I think this is Zoroark. 
I'm gonna U-turn Ardra. Try and break their illusion if it is Zora work. Nope, it is indeed Muck. We're gonna go to Rotom here though, as they power up Punch, but if we Wisp this, it's very good for us. And they don't particularly like taking a Wisp across the board, to be honest. They knock. Let's Volt Switch here. Into my Magnezone. Hopefully they go for a Poison Jab. Excellent, because in this position, I'm going to try and sub. Sub body press is really good. I don't think their knock will um, break my sub because they're burnt. We'll find out if it does. They power up punch, which means I can iron defense in their face, which is really good for me. I'm happy to just iron defense over and over again. The burn really did help me. Now, of course, they do break eventually, but I feel like the knock is not going to break my sub because I am plus three defense and they are burnt, which is super good for me. Which lets me body press something else coming in, especially something like Tyranitar is very good. Grimmsnarl comes in. We're just going to body press here. That's okay with me. It doesn't KO, unfortunately. The Reflect doesn't worry me too much. If they go into Greninja or Mandibuzz, we can easily click Discharge, which is going to be quite strong. Obviously, Tyranitar does not like eating an Iron Defense, and with Muck, I can just stall out the Taunt turns and try and um, Body Press again. Let's just Discharge here. Oh, of course. They are, oh, they're not Protein. That's uh, very surprising, as they are actually Zoroark with Illusion. That is good to know. So here, I think we're going to go into my Rotom, because I can do this all over again. I'm just simply going to Vault Switch here. Try and grab some momentum with my Tapu Koko. Perfect. This is a good position for me, because I can substitute again. I don't think their knock can break me. They go into T-Tar. Um, I'll Iron Defense once. And I should live this Earthquake. Quite comfortably, actually. Oh, they live the Body Press. That is surprising. Now the question is, do they expect me to go into something like Zapdos or Rotom? I think I go into Rotom anyway. I honestly think I still value my Megazone. Because here, Manectric will outspeed, and I can just Vault Switch into my Tapu Koko. Especially now that the illusion is broken on Zoro Aura, and Zoro Arc, sorry. My Vault Switch here, yeah, it's pretty good, it grabs momentum. with my Tapu Koko, because here, in this position, I think I want to start setting up my screens uh, for the Zero Aura endgame. And my opponent ends up forfeiting, so that was a pretty good game. They played pretty well, but I do think I had a, a nice out of my Zero Aura, and with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game against Mono Il uh, Water, sorry. Uh, this is going to be a tough one, because my opponent is very good. I've played them a few times on the ladder. They're a very good player, and of course, Mega Swampert is going to be a huge hassle for my team, especially because I do not run any grass moves. I think we're going to try open up at Coco, and Zapdos is going to be my answer to the likes of uh, Swampert. Because every time they try to liquidate or waterfall me, they do run the risk of getting static powered, uh, which is pretty good for something like um, Zara Aura or Manectric in the end game. So yeah, let's open top of Coco. Obviously, Swampert is the main issue here, so I do have to play around that quite carefully. They open up with their Greninja. I'm going to Reflect, expecting them to Gunk Shot me. And then I think I'm going to U-turn into maybe the likes of Rotom Wash. So Rotom can kind of Vault Switch around the place without, um, with relative ease. Oh, there you are, Choice Scarf Gunk Shot. This is very good to know. I'm going to U-turn here. I expected them honestly to swap out because I thought they'd expect my Magnezone to come in. Hmm. With the Reflect up, I'm going to try getting Rotom and Wisp here. Nothing particularly likes getting Vault switched on or we're getting Wisped. Okay. We'll take that. I'm going to Vault switch. It does a decent chunk, all things considered, into my Zero Aura. As they toxic, unfortunately. 
Hmm. I expect Swampert to come out here. So I'm gonna double into my Swamp into my own Rotom. Again, getting the burn is super good for me. As Pelipper comes out, okay. I mean we'll Vault Switch on this. Or do they U-turn on me? I'm gonna Vault Switch. Excellent, so we got rid of their rain, which is super, super good for me. And in this position, we can actually get in Coco. Because if they go into Choice Scarf Greninja, they do run the risk of not being able to... Okay, they go into Swampert. As we said earlier, we always go into Zapdos on this. In case they do Waterfall, they do run the risk of getting um, Staticked. That's Roost. Or do I Toxic this? Hmm... Once I do out speed, it's pretty... I'm going to dis... I'm going to roost here. And now I'm going to discharge. No, do I roost again? I'm kind of scared. They only have one rain turn left. That's Hurricane. Hurricane hits everything relatively nicely. Nice, and we get the confusion. So in this position, uh, other Pokemon like Manectric and Zero Aura can actually outspeed. Swampers. That's toxic, this. This thing can be a bit of a hassle. It is very specially defensive. And we're going to discharge once. And we can always sack Tapu Koko to the uh, future side coming out. So that ship on Slowbro is nice. Greninja comes in. Let's sack Tapu Koko and scout Greninja's intentions. So as long as my Zapdos is healthy, it's very good for me. They go for the Ice Beam, and the Future Sight doesn't hit, so we can easily take in Rotom here. Um, I'm going to Defog away the Rocks. And we're going to Vault Switch here into Zone. Of course, Urshifu is still an issue for me, which is why I think I value Toxapex being healthy still. Let's go into Zone here. On the Skull, we, that does not KO, so we can sub up in their face. Of course, this does kind of just say, hey, Urshifu, come in. Uh, but if it does come in, we do have uh, Zapdos as a swap in for now. Slowkin comes in. Let's just discharge this. Or do I body, do I iron defense? Let's discharge. They're probably teleporting. But the chip is quite nice. As expected, Urshifu comes in. I'm going to risk Zapdos. Because if this does get static powered, it's very good for me. And it has quite a high chance. Yes, nice. Let's roost once. Is that banded damage or that, that's scarf damage? And here we're going to hurricane in case Swampert wants to come in. I can always roost again in front of things like Urshifu, Toxapex. Yes, indeed, Swampert wants to come in. We don't get the confusion, unfortunately. Hmm. Do I sack my Zero Aura? I feel like my Manectric does everything that Zero Aura does, but maybe even slightly better in this position. So yeah, let's sack Zero Aura. As we actually might get a free knock here. If I could knock the Choice Scarf off Greninja, that would be ideal because then my Manectric actually outspeeds. Uh, we get the Black Sludge, that's pretty good. That's Plasma Fist once. I'm not too worried about Swampert. Excellent, as they give us Pex. That's such a good position for us. Because now the only thing that can outspeed me is Greninja, and I can scout their intentions of what they want to lock themselves into. There she comes in. Is this a... Uh... Is that Aqua Jet? I guess it is. Goodbye, Urshifu. Oh, nope, that lived. We'll Drain Punch once, just for some reason they want to go into Swampers. I didn't expect them to want to do that. And I think in this position, now's the position we Mega Evolve, Manectric, and Vault Switch. Aqua Jet shouldn't do too much to me. It did a surprising chunk. I'm gonna get Zapdos in. It doesn't outspeed Swampert, assuming it's max speed. But more importantly, it does scout for Gringer's intentions. Dark Pulse is what it uses. Hmm. Let's go into Rotom here, and I'm just going to click Hydro Pump. It kills the Swampert, and it does a decent chunk to Greninja, and I don't think Greninja can realistically damage my 
Row time too much. Nice. I'm going to Vault Switch here. Expecting Slowking to come in. As they actually stay in. Please don't flinch. Nice. So I think in this position, Manectric might just win. Assuming Hidden Power Ice kills, which I'm sure it does. Uh, Swampert, Mega, Rain Sweeper. Hidden Power Ice, 15 to 18. That should kill. GG. They played very well. They played the Swampert well. We can sack Zone in this position, I think. That's Iron Defense once. Or no, that's Sub. Oops. That's Sub up. In case they do go into Swampers. In case they teleport in. I mean, they're still on a timer thanks to... Thanks to uh, Toxic. So they can easily break this. And I don't think Swampert has any attacks that can heal him. Unless for some reasons like Rest, which would be crazy. And I guess in case it is, that's Iron Defense in case they have some sort of recovery move. Because in this position, the Manectric's Hidden Power Ice, I believe, should pick up the KO. Well played. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game against Mono Dark again. I believe it's the same player. And they played pretty well last time, so um, let's hope it can go well. I don't ordinarily use the same uh, person twice. I usually don't put up uh, rematches on these videos because I like to try and play as many different people as possible. But unfortunately, Nat Dex is a quiet ladder, so uh, we may have just have to do with it. So here we're going to open up with Rotom, I believe. Uh, the reason I open up with Rotom is in case they want to open up with something like Grimmsnarl or um, Muck. I can try to get a Will Wisp off turn 1. They open up with their T-Tar. I mean, I'll Wisp this. I would very much value a Wisp here. They can, of course, do some good damage to me. However, them being Wisp really, really hurts their chances. Of uh, doing too much in a later game. They go into Grimmsnarl. I mean, that's okay. I think I value this being Wisped. They might just go straight for screens, in which case I'm going to try and Volt switch out of here. Now, the question is, what do I go into? I kind of want to go into zone. And just try and get my Iron Defense or Sub up. They probably won't let me. I'll try Iron Defense once. So what that does is actually stall out a turn of their screens, which is kind of good for me in this position, especially because they are taking 12% uh, every turn thanks to Sandstorm and Burn. Okay, they taunt me. And with that, I think I'm going to go into Zera, and the reason I go in Zera is it doesn't allow Tyranitar to come out. They almost definitely taunt me again here, as I actually go into Mandibuzz, interesting. Are they going for Toxic? I'll go into zone here. As I definitely don't want to be toxic And I believe zone is pretty good against Mandibuzz. They can't Toxic. Foul play won't do too much, especially after a body press. And all they can really do is U-turn for momentum, but they do run the risk of getting body pressed as well. Now, of course, uh, Tyranitar is actually quite a threat to me at the moment. Yes, perfect. Let's try and get behind a cheeky sub here. As pretty much no matter what comes out, it's going to have to eat a body press, which they're not going to like. Greninja comes in. They still have four turns of the reflex, so I'm just going to go ahead and body press here. Or do I discharge? I'll discharge. As their hidden power fire. Good to know, their life orb. A para is so good for me here. So this means we can get in Rotom, and kind of Vault Switch for Momentum. And off this Momentum, I want to try and get in my Tapu Koko. And get my screens up, which is going to stop them from easily using Tyranitar later in the game, which is exactly what they go into. Let's just Wisp this again. If they go into Grimmsnarl, that's completely fine with me, because I take 12%, and I can always Vault Switch off. Of course, I value a burn on Tyranitar so much. That would be uh, pretty nice for me. The question is... Greninja, I'm outspeeding. Muck, they give me damage on Muck, which is quite good. We're going to Volt Switch here again. 
They might be Zero Arc. If they're Zero Arc, I don't think they can do too much damage. They are indeed Zero Arc. That is very good to know because in this position, we can get in Coco and actually just set up my screens. So they're positioning their Tarantar very well. I have to admit, which is why I think I value my Reflect here so much. However, if they do take in Tyranitar, I can easily uh, taunt them to stop them Dragon Dancing. And especially with the Reflect up, they shouldn't be doing too much damage to me. That looks to be choice specs based on that damage. 35% is quite a lot to uh, a max, especially defensive Rotom. I mean, I can check it real quick here. Let me cancel my move just in case. Actually, they swap out anyway. Into their actual muck. This is perfect for me. I'm going to U-turn into my Magnezone. Hmm. Do I go into Magnezone and risk a power punch? They go into Tyranitar. Okay, I mean, I'll take the damage here. I think on Tyranitar, we're actually going to try taking my Zero Aura and get one bulk up on. And what bulk up should let me do is guarantee you live the earthquake thanks to reflect, of course, assuming you don't crit. And then my drain punch should KO and gain the majority of the HP back. Okay, they go into Mandibuzz. We'll just Plasma Fist here. This is 130 base stab coming off a plus one zero aura. Even if you do live, this leaves you in a bad position. And nothing at the team at all like swapping into a plus one Plasma Fist in Electric Terrain. So that's quite good for me. Hmm. They're positioning their Tyranitar extremely well. This might KO. Ooh, 96% is very good though. Ah, Tailwind. That is scary. That puts them in a position where Tyranitar does a lot to my team. Go Plasma Fist once more. I do think I still live in Earthquake. The Zoroark is a threat to my team. Especially if they go in Grimmsnarl first. But if they go in Grimmsnarl, they're actually just wasting their turns of um, Tailwind in my opinion. Because I can just swallow them out with bulk up. In this position, I'm pretty sure... Let's check Zara Aura against Tyranitar Mega. We're calling Dragon Dance. Earthquake. Neutrally does 103 to 122 with a reflect up on my screen, which I can never, ever seem to find. Um, watching this, you guys are probably shouting at me like it's right there. There it is. With reflect and plus one defense. Honestly, Earthquake does tickle damage. 34 to 41. How much does my Drain Punch do at plus one? 91 to 107. So this should KO. Their Earthquake, unless it crits, of course, it won't KO. Nice. And I should get a good chunk of my HP back. Very good. Back up to 77, which is very good for me. Because the Greninja is paralyzed, it's not too much of a threat. I think I can Oko Mock with uh, Plasma Fist. As my opponent is taking some time. Okay, it looks like they're not going to come back. And we win again against this opponent. They played well, but I do think my team um, is quite strong against theirs. So with that, we end up at 15.29. And I think I'm actually going to leave it there. It's going to be a, a bit of a shorter live today. Because I think I did really, really well. So I don't really want to... Um, to like, basically lose when I have a good thing going. So let's check where I ended up on the ladder. Not Dex Monotype, 1529 is probably my record for number 42 in the ladder. Not bad. I'm not a Not Dex player, so I think that's pretty good. And with that, I'm going to pause and be right back. So we have a game against a Mono Electric. So it's a Mono Electric Ditto. Uh, this is going to be pretty tough. Things like Zero Aura are pretty scary for my team, as well as maybe Raichu Alola. Um, because it is going to outspeed the majority of my team. We're going to open up with my own Tapu Koko, and I think we're going to try and get a Reflect. Actually, a Light Screen up turn 1. Their team does look... Uh, has some special attackers like Raichu and Rotom, but I think Golem can be a threat too, so if possible, I do want my Reflect as well. 
Are they Z crystal? I feel like Tapu Koko are quite often Z. Hmm. Let me check. What do I have? I have static on my... My Nectric. Lightning Rod would have been a good... To have this game. As the U-turn out. Okay. They look to be a physical Tapu Koko based on how much damage that did. So they might be um, Z Wild Charge or the likes. They go to the Raichu. I mean, I'm going to U-turn on this. I don't think they can kill. They get a crit, unfortunately, which in fact does kill. That is unfortunate because I do think a U-turn there would have been quite strong. I'm going to get a Mazera here and try knock something coming in. Especially something like Rotom could be quite nice as I knock Zapdos. I mean, that's pretty good. We're going to bulk up once. hope they don't toxic me. They roost because in this position, Plasma Fist is quite strong. So I'm going to go for that. I think a 2 KOs. Yes, definitely. And they miss their Toxic, okay? I think that makes up for the, um... For the, uh... Critical on the... Raichu. This is probably Earthquake. Let's go into Rotom here. And try Spreader Burn. Ooh, it's Counter. Very interesting. So let's just Wisp this and then Volt Switch out. Losing my Tapu Koko is unfortunate. Ideally, I would want to live... Uh, we can go to Zapdos here. As I am still scared of their Raichu, it's still quite a big threat to my team. It's good to know the Golem is counter. They go into Zera or I will try Toxic here. And unfortunately they get the crit on the knock, that really hurts. And I miss the Toxic, oh my god. This game is, uh, is certainly something. We're, we're gonna go Manectric here. Just because I think I can roost on things like Golem. I did so much. We'll live thanks to Mega and the Intimidate and we'll just go for a Flamethrower. Hmm. Question is, do I value this being alive still? I don't think I do, and Toxic kills Zera or this turn. As they swap into Tapu Koko, I mean, I'll take that. The extra damage is very much appreciated, and we're just going to click Flamethrower here again. Into a Vault Switch. Now, I expect them to probably go into Zera Aura. I should have Flamethrowered again. I knew that was coming. Let's sack my Zapdos. And scout their intentions. They're still going for knock. Hmm. In this position, I think I want to intimidate. And the reason for that is afterwards, I should be able to potentially get a bulk up on the Zera Aura. Which is pretty good for me in this position. So if I bulk here, they do faint. And I think I can pretty much KO anything coming in. Golem comes in, so I want to do as little damage as possible. Let's go for a Plasma Fist. Hopefully it doesn't put me in range of being countered. Ooh, they go for Stone Edge. Quite strong. We're going to Drain Punch here. And unfortunately, I don't get the KO. Ah, uh, this is a very bad position for me. I do potentially outspeed with Magnazone, but if they do run Earthquake, it's not good for me. As they are Magnet Trap. Or they're not, okay. Hmm. I think they're going to go for Gigavolt Havoc, so we're going to try e at Magnazone. As they just go for a Wild Charge. Let's go ahead and set up a cheeky uh, Iron Defense into a sub. This puts me in a pretty decent position. Especially if I can keep subbing up in their face. With max defense, I might be able to uh, live a Golem's Counter, or a Golem's Earthquake. Now the question is, can I kill Raichu? And the answer is probably not. Oh, wow, they did a lot of damage. Hmm. Do I value keeping Megazone alive for Golem? I think yes, I do, because I think Pump kills here. So I'm going to go into my own Rotom. Oh. As our Hydro Vortex, so it's a good thing I did, because that did, like, no damage to me. And I think in this position, we just click Hydro Pump. They can't recover, and they're slowly taking chip from my burn, which is very good. And I should outspeed Golem, and Body Press should KO. Ooh, as our Pain Split. That is not good for me. Now, the reason I want to kill with my Rotom instead of my Magnezone is because Hydro Pump does have 80% accuracy and I'm not about to miss on the Golem and lose. We just keep pumping here. 
Now I should outspeed, assuming, well, I do guarantee outspeed this and hopefully pump hits. Oh, they're cussed up. Interesting play. As I said there, Hydro Pump missed. They ended up missing Stone Edge anyway, but even if they did hit Stone Edge, I don't think it would have been much against my Magnezone. So we get another W, and with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So that is going to be it for Mono Electric for today. Uh, definitely a bit of a shorter live than usual, however, I do think I played pretty well. I think I did the team justice. I decided not to go for a too fast of an electric type, which is kind of unusual. Usually, I'd like to use something like Alolan Raichu, Regieleki, or Zerkatry, something that has really good late game potential. But I decided I'd go for more of a kind of offensive or a bulky offensive electric type with screen support, Tapu Koko. And I do think it paired it off pretty well, so hopefully you did enjoy. I think electric is really good here in the Nat decks, especially with the return of uh, the Hidden Power. I actually didn't end up clicking Hidden Power Ice, I don't think, once throughout the entire live with Mega Manetric but it is there for those pesky ground types and dragon types which do give the team trouble so if you did enjoy i really appreciate leaving a like or a comment it helps me out so much and uh, it does not go unnoticed that you really appreciate that i already have some other types in the works at the moment but if you want to see anything specifically uh, soon let me know in the comments down below and i will try work on that type in the nat decks so with that i hope you have a fantastic day take care and i'll catch you next time